Okay, so back to what I was saying, that in production network, you would want your syslog server to be statically statically assigned with an IP address, or if it's, that, if it's via DTP, you would want a reservation, of course, because you don't want the IP address to change uh, constantly. Either way, let's go and deploy that. So going on router 2, I'm not sure which one is the IP address which was designed to, the, to test PCA, uh, between because those IP addresses are being assigned to different uh, DHCP client identifiers. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go on test PCA and say IP config to identify what is the actual IP address which was assigned to PCA. So let's go open up a command prompt and say IP config. And let's look at the NIC card facing the lab. And there we go, it is 172.16.96.51. That's the IP address which was leased via DHCP. With a default gateway of dot two. Let's see if I can pick the default gateway just for to, pr to confirm my peak connectivity. And there we go, it is. So let's go on the router, which is router 2. And let's make sure we have logging on to begin with. Then I said logging constant informational. Logging. Uh, actually, let me show you how you can disable logging. So you can say if you don't want any logs to be show, to show up on a console, you can say no logging console. So let's actually disable console logging. So I wanted the console to see no logs whatsoever. Then I want to see at the VTI lines, informational level 6, add the buffer to see debugging, logging buffered. You can even configure the buffer size, optionally of course, let's say 8192 and debugging. And logging, trap, informational, so towards the syslog server, and then logging host, 172.16.96.51 transport being UDP by default on port 514. Of course you can say do show run include logging but as I was saying in the beginning of the class ideally show run is not a proper verification command because you're not actually seeing show run doesn't mean that the router actually is going to behave as in show run. So you can say clear logging with this command to clear the buffer there we go. So show logging is now going to show me that at the console level, for the console I have disabled logging. Like here we go. At the console, logging is being disabled. At the VTI lines I have informational level. So this is for VTI monitor logging, then at the buffer level I have debugging level enabled, and syslog level it's informational, and I'm sending all log messages to test PCA as you can see on the default port of 514. And now if you scroll down a bit more you're gonna see in there the log buffer which is empty now, but of course I could say something like debug R, for example, and clear ARP to force a ARP refresh. And then now if we say show logging, because ARP packets have, have, should have been sent back and forth, there we go. I see in the buffer the, the output of my debug commands, because in the buffer I'm logging at the debugging level. But as you can see, those log messages were, didn't show up on the console because at the console I, had this, I have disabled logging. And likewise, those will not show up even at the uh, VTI lines because at the VTI lines, I'm using likewise informational. Now let's go on my syslog server and open up the syslog server uh, tool. I'm going to use the start all programs and then it is going to be
this tool and then syslog server and let's say view log files let's send some so because at the at the syslog level I'm sending informational level messages currently probably I don't want, I I'm not gonna spend time generating level 6 messages I could do that by for example putting an access with, with a login keyword let's actually do that conf t let's do that configure terminal and say IP access extended syslog test and let's say permit IP any any log and apply that access list inbound on router 2's interface of gig zero zero and then I'm gonna go on router 3 and ping router 2 I'm gonna match that access list with the login keyword configured and I'm gonna generate a type 6 a level 6 informational message which is gonna be sent to all destinations where informational level is configured which means per my configuration is gonna mean syslog and VTI lines. So let's apply before I apply that access list. Let's go also on router one and then tenant on router two. To be able to tenant on router two, let's put in some passwords on the VTI lines section line. Let's put a password so I'm, I'm going to be able to tenant on the router. Password Cisco and privilege level 15. Let's say. Let's go on router 1 and turn it to router 2. And authenticate with Cisco. There we go. So now let's go on router 2 and apply that access list to enforce the traffic. And I should see the log messages being sent to both the syslog server and the VTI lines. So let's go and say interface gig 00. Interface gigabit 00. IP access group. The name of the ACL. Inbound on my gig 00 interface. Now the access list is using the any keyword. It is there you go one match. So I should be I should send this is because of the routing protocol which is matching my my access list. I'm running AIGRP. So now going on my syslog server I should see a log message probably about the AIGRP. Let's confirm that and there we go. If I'm gonna zoom it in there you're going to see that a log message was received. There you go, the, the top message in there which speaks about a EIGRP packet. So the, the log message says IP access log list, the list syslog test permitted EIGRP from router trees IP address of 136.1.22.3 to the multicast address of EIGRP 234.0.0.10 and that's one packet. So this confirms that at the syslog level I'm logging informational level because even in the live message, message we can see that it says sec 6 IP access log which 6 defines the uh, level of the message and by default access is logging is going to be a, a level of 6. But if you look on router 1 you should see no logging, no log messages at all because as I was saying if you want to see logging at the VTI lines you got to say terminal monitor. So now let's let's generate a new a new packet let's go on router 3 and for example ping router 2 which is going to match on the ACL and it should generate some log messages and there we go it showed up in here on the VTI lines now because I have I have en enabled the capability to see the log messages at the VTI lines. So it, for the VTI lines, it's one thing to configure the feature, which is logging monitor. 
And another thing to be able to see the log messages while being on a VTI line session, which requires a terminal monitor command to be configured within that session. But as you can see, it says that syslog test, that's the name of the ACL, has allowed ICMP traffic between VARAT-V and VARAT-2, and that is the exact packet that I have initiated from VARAT-V, a pink packet from VARAT-V to the loopback of VARAT-2, which is 10.2.2.2. And you see in here the level of the message of, as being 6, which that confirms that because I'm logging at level 6 on the VTI lines and on the syslog server, that confirms that I'm seeing the proper message at VTI lines. Likewise, if you, if you go and look on the syslog server, you should also see, now the first line in there, you should see the syslog message for the ICMP traffic. Let's look it up again. And there we go. It says permitted ICMP from 136.123.3 to 10.222, one packet. Okay. So pretty much this was it with syslog. Let's see if there are any questions before we move on. As I was saying, for CCNA, we just speak about basic, we just introduce what tools are available and basic functionality, because otherwise behind the scenes, it's even even though something like syslog seems simple, simple, it is actually a lot of options you can go ahead and configure with syslog behind the scenes. So that's gonna be at the CCNP level, CCIA level, but not CCNA level.